really doesn't matter where you're working if the quality of your work is, is very solid, number one. And number two, most people in companies have jobs that either are to, to help the company make money or to cut costs or expenses and help the company save money. And so you should be asking for a raise or a bonus or what have you if you're good at your job and you've been doing it and you have proof to show that. The same thing you should be doing pre-COVID if you were in the office. Are you putting together a portfolio, so to speak, of what you've accomplished for your company, for your department. And if you can put something that shows that you've actually accomplished something that's helped the company, then you have a really strong case to make and you should do it. Are bosses empathetic to that right now? Do they understand this tight job market? And again, we're talking white collar workers. Do bosses get it and are they willing to cough up the cash right now? Tom? Yeah, absolutely they get it. What we have is a situation that everybody's watching your show, reading the news online. I was going to say reading the newspaper. I don't think that happens as much. But what we have is a situation <laughs> where you know, workers with skills are in high demand and uniquely in a low unemployment market and with COVID and home delivery, like your earlier stories, that workers with less skills are still in high demand. And so what employers and what employees have to be careful of is putting a proverbial gun to their boss's head of, I'm going to quit if I don't get it without making a case. Because eventually the, the music will stop and you want to make sure that you have a chair. And, and, and so if you're an employee, look at what your contributions are to the company. Look at, do you like your job, right? Most people don't quit jobs they really like. They quit jobs they don't like. And so you've got to you've got to evaluate your situation the same as you would pre-COVID. It's just different that you're not working in the office, so you don't have that interaction. It's easier to quit emotionally than it's ever been before. Alicia, what would you tell people uh, just in terms of steps for how you go about doing this? You know, I think that last point was really important. You know, you're not most likely if you've been working from home, you're not getting that same face-to-face -face time with your manager or your boss. Um, so they just might not be as aware of all the things you're doing as they were, you know, when they could look up from their desk and see you or walk by you, you know, on the way out the door. So you really do need that list of accomplishments. Um, and, you know, it might be something where you give it to your employer, you know, before you go into the, the raise conversation. And you really want to put in detail what you've done, what you've accomplished, how you've helped, you know, the company reach their goals, what the company wants to wants to have reached. Um, and that from all the sort of like HR professionals I've talked to, that sort of become like the most important thing is really making sure your employer knows what you've done. Hey, Tom, I hadn't really thought of it from that perspective before. I mean, it used to be a problem that you, you had the squeaky wheel who would get greased in this situation because they were talking so much about what they'd done. Are we talking about COVID even amplifying that? So the biggest jerks in the office are the ones who get the biggest raises because they're more than happy to talk about everything they've done when maybe the quiet worker who's been working along and really doing things is going to get hosed even more. No, I don't think that's necessarily the case. There's always going to be highlights that we talk about where, where you are right, where the person who's the loudest, the squeaky wheel does get the oil. But overall, that's not the case. I mean, if you look at what we're going to get further into, Becky, and we've talked about a lot when you've had me on the show, is this blue collar, white collar divide and, and service yeah. level people, hospitality workers, restaurant workers are the ones who are leaving the workforce in higher droves than ever before. And if you look at it and you say, my spouse, now we don't have stats yet on whether people are married or not married or living with other people. And so you have situations where if my spouse's income has gone up 15 to 20%, and if I don't want to leave the house and I have daycare, and 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 so that, that cost is 30 or 40% of my salary daycare, that if my, it, my, my spouse's income's gone up, daycare is going up, that it doesn't make as much sense for me to be working. And what we have is this inflation issue. And what we're really going to have a problem is when daycare costs go up, and that mirrors the whole thing. And then you're going to have to get people who have to go back to work because their spouse's income isn't going to cover it. It's really a vicious circle right now. But to answer your question directly, no, the, the loudest voice isn't going to get the money. The people that are adding the most value to the company, we still have record profits. We have record stock market. We have public and private companies being sold in record numbers. And that means employees are doing a great job. Know the value you add, put your case together and get the raise you deserve.